ends the Mother's Day edition of Mostly Metal. That was Ozzy Osbourne with Mama, I'm Coming Home. That song picked by our esteemed WVLP station manager, Greg Kovach, the man with like 23,000 albums. And of all the songs he could tell me to play for a Mother's Day show, that's the one he picked. ACT right before that with Waltz with Mother Nature off of today's report. I'm Ken, the metal professor. This has been Mostly Metal here on WVLP. Next week from 8 to 930 um, I'm going to play a lot of Evergrey. So this week's theme was Mother's Day. Next week's theme will be Evergrey because on the 26th, they're going to be at Reggie's in Chicago, and I'm going to go see that, and I need to get myself psyched up. So we'll listen to a lot of Evergrey in a week. Uh, with me in the studio now is CK1. How's it going? Great. Thank you so much for coming in. We're going to start talking wrestling in just a minute or so. Um, so make sure you're comfortable and everything sounds good for you with the headphones and all that? Yep. Okay, all right. So that ends Mostly Metal and now starts the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program. Your insubordination will not be tolerated. It is 9.30 here on WVLP, 103.1 FM in Valparaiso, Indiana, and also streaming on WVLP.org. I'm Ken the Metal Professor, and it's the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program, and my special guest in the studio is CK1. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, this is this is your official moniker now, CK1? Yep. And so it was Christopher Kent, the product Christopher Kent. Correct. And now it's shortened a little bit to CK1. Is there is there a particular strategy to that name change? Uh, just new attitude, new name, new look, basic stuff. You can have t-shirts? I might. You might? Okay, cool. I'll look forward to that. So if you don't mind, I, I prepared a little special introduction song for you to, right. for just a second here. And hopefully you'll know why. <laughs> and if not, it's going to be really dumb. But let's, let's see how this goes. You're a funny man. <laughs> You're a funny man. <laughs> Now, the, the, most of you don't know what's going on, but uh, wait, I got to turn this off now because we don't actually want to listen to the whole thing. That was just it was one of the greatest things on Facebook I'd ever seen for a long time. You broke we, the Internet. <laughs> so on, on his uh, on his Facebook page, CK1 was talking about having that song, uh, Africa by Toto, stuck in his head. And somebody replied and posted like the first line of lyrics. And then somebody else replied and posted the second line of lyrics. And pretty soon, almost the entire song had played out in your responses. Yeah, they got wildly out of control really fast. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was just terrific. So I had to do that. That's I'm sorry. Um, so for folks that don't know um, that who have who don't know you that haven't seen you um, seen you work yet, uh, you're you're mostly active around here in Fire Pro and Acme Championship Wrestling, or do you have like third and fourth homes that you are frequently uh, performing in? Uh, currently with the kids and the other job. That's all I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. Okay. How old are your kids? Uh, Nora is going to be three next month, and Clay oh, wow. is one. Okay, so you have your hands full, yeah. not just with, with wrestling and, and work and things like that. That's, so juggling all that is pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, if somebody hasn't seen a CK1 match before, what, uh, what would you tell them to expect if they came to see one of your shows? Don't expect to flip, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, expect a lot of ground and pound, a lot of, a lot of in-your-face, a lot of jaw jacking. Mm -hmm. It's basic stuff. I try to keep it simple, keep it down to my pace, kick and punch, slam them around. If they uh -huh. want to go up top, that's their business, but yeah. don't miss. <laughs> Good. Um, so Fire Pro is, uh, is active about once a month? Mm -hmm. Well, Fire Pro typically runs about 20 shows a year. So, okay. I mean, if averaged it, it's like a show and a half a month. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, basically. Okay. And uh, you, we've got one coming up this weekend. So on mm -hmm. May, Sun, uh, Saturday... May twentieth. Yes. Fire Pro one thirty four. Um, Correct. Have they have they done one hundred and thirty four, one hundred and thirty three shows? Or that's probably more? that's probably lowballing it. Best yeah. we can think of. Yeah. That's, that's they've probably done more. It's probably closer to one hundred and fifty if we really did the homework. Mm -hmm. That's impressive too. Do you? Um, so what are what's your responsibility in in that organization other than just getting in there and beating people up? Uh, behind the scenes, I help with promotion. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. 
Is is there a particular reason the for the location being chosen? So the fire pro for people that have, have heard before, you might have heard me have heard me mention it's it's held at Impact Christian Church in Merrillville. Um, is, was there a particular connection with you or somebody else? And uh, oh yeah, and absolutely. There, um, fire pro was started by a uh, uh, Chicago guy who knows Botch uh, around here, diehard Steve Zog. Uh, he passed away several years ago to cancer. Um, he started the church and fire pro at about the same time, and uh, he trained my brother and I, who doesn't wrestle anymore currently. And so, yeah, when they he passed, he wants some of the older guys to kind of show show us what to do with some stuff. And then it's just kind of been going like that. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's with the church still. And yeah, just trying to keep everything going best we can. Is that you like that venue? Yeah, it's a good venue. Good crowd. Yeah, solid crowd. Does it do you ever have any concerns about, or, you know, limitations? I mean, obviously, just in good taste, right? You would want to be a little bit careful being in that venue. Does that ever cause any issues with limitations on what you might be able to do or no, because as far as the matches go, we can pretty much get a, like do whatever we need to do. Um, mm-hmm. Like, no, obviously, no, there's no vulgarity or anything like right. that. But really, I don't think you need that if mm-hmm. you're really trying to sell a product. Yeah. You shouldn't have to just be dropping f bombs and cussing people out mm-hmm. on the mic to sell something. So, I mean, it actually helps in a way because people have to come there and then they have to actually focus on like their match and not just like doing their thing on the side. Like mm-hmm. they actually have to pay attention to what they're doing. Right. And some places, you know, you can just walk in, just do whatever you want, and leave. Mm-hmm. You can get on the mic, do whatever you want, and leave. So, I mean, it's nice. It is. It, uh, I've there. There's a lot of different groups in here that are active, and for the most part, they all, not all of them, but most of them, pretty you know, kind of strive to have a family friendly atmosphere. Which I, I think, think most do. Cool. You have some flubs, and then you just have some people that don't get it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. But yeah, to not strive for family friendly when it's wrestling is pretty ignorant if you're trying mm-hmm. to make money. Yeah, um, and also making future fans. Right. You could entertain all the grown-ups pretty well for a while, but if you're not bringing in the young folks, then that, that would fizzle out after a while, right. I would imagine. Um, and then there's Acme Championship Wrestling. Um, how long have you been involved with, with them? Um, I've been with Acme, I want to say almost since they were actually Acme. I think I've been there mm-hmm. just about. Okay. And at the risk of dating you, or you, you were one of the, let's say, the more experienced folks in, in that organization? Well, I mean, I'm certainly the best guy there. Well, sure. But, uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> definitely probably most experienced, if not one of the most. Yeah, do you, so do you, uh, do you ever take part in any training, you know, helping, the, helping out with the, the younger folks coming along and showing up? Um, the I've been and... around, but my philosophy with training is who am I? Mm-hmm. Like, what have I done? Like, what business do I have teaching anyone from the ground up? Like, I can offer my opinion on little details here and there based on what I've learned, but as far as me taking money or helping someone from the ground up, I don't think it's really my business. Mm-hmm. I used to do that for Fire Pro, and then I stopped for that reason, because yeah. I just felt stupid. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, just blindly in the blind, and then you turn out one crappy guy who turns out three crappy guys who turns out six crappy guys, and <laughs> the state of independent wrestling today is where it is. Yeah. Um, who, who out there is in those two groups or people to keep an eye on right now? Mm, obviously, your favorite, Austin Fury. I'd keep an eye on him. Um, let me think. Uh, Xavier Black over at Acme. Probably want to keep keep an eye on him. A uh, little attitude adjustment. Uh, he's got a good look. A little mm-hmm. attitude adjustment. I think he'll go pretty well. Um, Drax Odell, obviously. Um, yeah. Nice size, nice build. He mm-hmm. moves. He's good. And then, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of hardworking kids over at Acme that are really trying. I mean, any of them could break out if they just applied the effort and actually, like, sat down and listened. And then Fire Pro. Fire Pro is a very healthy mix of veterans and then newer guys. I mean, anyone there can do anything at any time. So, I mean, yeah, Fire Pro, I would pretty much just, because, I mean, a lot of the Acme guys cross over. So mm-hmm. I would just watch pretty much everyone at Fire Pro and then everyone at Acme and just yeah. see what happens. I have, it, it is fun to go see, um, go see those shows when you see this. You get to know the same faces and they show up in multiple different places, which makes it, it, makes it really easy to not worry that I'm going to this group show or that group show. Right. As long as there's continuity with their character and what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Drives me absolutely nuts when someone's one way somewhere and then 10 minutes down the road they're a different way. I've, yeah, I've, I've encountered that before, and that's, that can be confusing. Yeah, that's shame on the bookers and shame on the boys for agreeing to it. Mm-hmm. Is there a way for folks to kind of, key, other, than, other than going to every single show, is there a way for folks to keep up on what, you know, what may have happened at a previous show? So when you go in, say somebody comes to Fire Pro 134 this weekend, mm-hmm. and they've never been there before. Um, is it like jumping into a comic book series where you just kind of have to learn as you go? Is there a way to figure out what's been going on or get some um, clues? Like with Fire Pro, um, storylines are pretty straightforward with what's going on. Like you can kind of catch up if you pay attention during the show what's going on. But I mean, a lot of things are getting revamped. The Facebook page has been pretty good about that. The company page about recaps. Um, mm-hmm. They're working on getting YouTube videos set up and chopped up for the matches and stuff. So that'll be going fast. 
and then Acme does stuff. I'm not entirely sure. I'm, I'm not really involved backstage on that end. Okay. But yeah, but Fire Pro, there's there's ways, and then there'll be better ways soon. Mm-hmm. Now at Fire Pro, um, there's a table set up where it looks like some folks are doing commentary. Does that yes. get put into the videos yes. that are that are on YouTube? But tell me something about the guy in the mask. Latino I, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was a joke that stuck, and like he actually gets asked for autographs more than most people. <laughs> That's uh, I think he's Mexican. He has like an accent. It could be Mexican. I'm uh-huh. not sure. I've never seen under the mask. I've tried to get it off a couple times. HR had to talk to me about it. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's Hispanic. Definitely some sort of Hispanic. But yeah, he doesn't know too much about wrestling. He's just kind of there, I think. Mm-hmm. And then Jim, the guy with the perm, he's pretty straight up. And sure. then obviously acting president Billy Vick sits there with them on commentary mm-hmm. too. It, the, the mask and the, the combination of the mask and the hat, I think, yes. is what make it. That's, yes. that's it's terrific. interesting. That's, so and to me, that, that adds a little bit to the product when you've got some folks, you know, so there they have the commentary table set up, which for whatever reason, you know, even if you're not listening to it, just, just the sight of that seems to add a little bit to, the, to what's going on. Right. Um, and I like what, what uh, ACW does when um, I don't know that it's commentary that's roped into a video, but there's a table out there and the, the GM, Michael Allen, will sit out there at the yeah, table. Yeah, Michael and, Allen's out there not minding his business as yeah. usual. Yeah, yeah. It's just I think it's just him and the announcer Chris Guzman hanging mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Michael Allen should probably just staying back where he belongs. But you know, <laughs> do you do you? So I know uh, Drex Odell was in here last week, and and he and Michael Allen just just don't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff. I don't see eye to eye with the man yeah, either. I was going to ask if you encountered the same. He's an things. idiot. Like he doesn't know who to give the proper shots for the belts to. He doesn't know where his money's at in the company. Like he's a complete idiot. I would gladly punch that man out. Absolutely. Does that do you? Does that come to the forefront at all? Because oh, we've gone last, rounds before. Yeah. Absolutely. When I had the Intercontinental title, I was trying to get the heavyweight round and round and round. Mm-hmm. He tried to make me jump through hoops, and I just breeze right through. So that's a thing with him, then, because he's been doing the same thing with Drex Odell recently. Yeah, he's he's a he's a guy that won't get in the ring, but he's on a power trip. Yeah, but he he seems like a real nice guy. Maybe I'll have to come. I mean, maybe I don't like him. You can like him. That's fine. He, I'll, I'll ask him some. I'll ask him the tough questions if I ever get him back in here. You should. Yeah see what's going on so when did you decide that this was what you wanted to do Get wrestling ris- risking your health and life and limb well, for like, other people's entertainment since i started watching it which i did the reverse of most guys most guys will sit down and be like i watched like the territories i watched this like i really didn't get into wrestling until i was in like middle school like the austin era and then i backtracked it all the way back mm-hmm. to tully and flair and all that stuff but i mean ever since like middle school i kind of wanted to do it like we backyard and all that and then one day my friend called me. He's like, you'll never guess what I was doing. I was at my youth retreat with my youth minister. He's a wrestler. All the wrestlers were slamming me. They did a show. And he said, I'll train you and your brother if you just come talk to him. So I was like, oh, they kind of just fell on our laps. So we're like, let's go talk to this dude. Mm-hmm. And there you go. Yeah, no, it's, and has it been steady work ever since then? Or Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I first started, I was wrestling every weekend. Like I said earlier, I just cut it back now because with the kids and yeah, the job, it's just right. a lot. What's the farthest you've ever traveled to go to a show, to, to perform at a show? Um, let me think. Probably out to Wisconsin Dells is probably the mm-hmm. farthest. What's the so in, in biggest and smallest crowds? Roughly. Biggest crowd, probably about seven hundred. Okay, smallest nice. crowd. Mm-hmm. I've wrestled uh, I've opened on a Lucha Libre show in front of seven non English speaking fans. Yikes. <laughs> and they loved me because they didn't understand the concept of what was happening. Mm-hmm. It was interesting. It seems like it, is that a is that a relatively easy barrier to break? Because a lot of the stuff that goes on, it seems like it's language independent. Like there's a lot of body language that goes on, and there's there's attitude language. But maybe if you don't under, even understand what the person's saying, you can still get a lot of get a lot out of it. Is that true? Yeah, you can. I mean, this particular group, they either didn't care or they just liked my robe or something because uh-huh. they just didn't care what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a nice robe. Yeah. Well, have you seen it? It's pretty classy. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, have you ever done the whole, like the the marathon thing where you have, you know, one show Friday and then two shows on Saturday, so you got to work one and hustle out to get? I've, to I've never done one show and then double shotted like that. I've done back to back shows where I've double shotted on the same day, like I've done that, but I've never done like mm-hmm. one show and then double shot the next day and then yeah, that would, sounds terrible. What is the what's your what's your favorite thing about about this about what you do? It's probably two favorite things, in the ring and then out. In the ring, it's just nice to get out there and express yourself and just do something you're happy about. It's good physical activity. I thoroughly enjoy it. 
whether I'm taking the beating or giving it out. It's just fun. And then backstage, I really enjoy the brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people don't get it, but that's fine. I mean, and a lot of guys, you can really just kind of be yourself completely, and there's never any judgment, and it's really nice. It's like a step back from society into its own little world, and that's really nice. And a lot of guys lose sight of that, and they get real judgmental, or they worry about their spot, or they start judging what this guy's doing on his off time, or what this guy's doing after his match. Like, we're all brothers. It's brotherhood. Mm-hmm. I protect you. You protect me. We protect the business. But a lot of that gets lost in the shovel, which goes back to people not being properly trained in all mm-hmm. aspects of what they should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are, what's like the biggest frustration that comes along and maybe you've already touched on it a bit, but people not being able to accept, they don't know what they're doing. Absolutely. Uh, young guys think they got two months of training. They think they know it all because they can do a flip. And then you got Jerry Joe veteran who's worked 12 years, Mm -hmm. which one show a month for 12 years does not a veteran make. Like, I would never really consider myself a veteran for that very reason. Like, I've done some time, but not a lot. But, like, those guys will never re- – they just think that they're – it's just the more – everyone thinks respect is just granted and not earned. Mm-hmm. And just like in the real world, like, you have to earn respect repeatedly over and over. Like, I'll respect that you've been in, but I'm not going to respect you as a worker, as a person, just because you've been in. Mm-hmm. Especially if you walk around like a dick. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just not going to respect you. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the veterans, their thing is – they're older, so they just want to beat up a young guy. Like, why are you going to take the young guy with potential and break him? It's stupid. You're shooting yourself in the foot because mm-hmm. you're going to need him later to help make money when you can't. Do you think folks that that do that kind of thing are the outliers? I mean, are most of the people, the, the young guys, are most of them amenable to taking hints and suggestions and learning? Or Some young guys are. It all depends on who they trained and just who they are. Like, some guys just think that, like, I have my training, I have a match, I should be the champion everywhere I go, blah, 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 blah. I'm an idiot, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, they just watch TV, and a lot, of everyone, like, everyone wants to be The Rock, obviously. Everyone wants to be Hogan. Like, you can't, everyone mm-hmm. can't. Not even on TV is everyone that guy. Like, people don't understand the psychology of the show, the psychology of the roster. Like, you have to have people on the bottom so someone can be on top. I mean, it might cycle down to you, but it might not. Mm-hmm. Like, not everyone gets a turn. That's just the way it goes. And there's always a lot of crying in the locker room. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Why can't I have this? It's just a show. Calm down. Mm-hmm. It's just a show. And you're probably not even being paid well enough to care that much. So people just need to, like, put their, check their egos at the door. Mm-hmm. Like, you're running, we're running around in pants, no shirts. Like, it's serious, but don't take yourself too seriously. Mm-hmm. Like not amongst the brothers. Like yeah. we're all we're all hit to it. Right. Actually you, you said something that's almost exactly like one of my, my favorite phrases is that you can take things seriously without taking them seriously. Right. If that, yeah. Right. That's always good. Um, if somebody has n- never been to a wrestling show whatsoever, um, and maybe never thought they would want to. So like I, I I've joked about this before that hosting this show and this, you know, the wrestling part of it and the, the heavy metal part of it is I've got a whole lot of conversation stoppers. Like, what, what's your favorite music? Heavy metal, oh, and the conversation stops. What do you like to do with your free time? Well, I like to go watch professional wrestling shows. And, oh, So if somebody's one of those people that would say, oh, to that, what, what, do, you, what do you say to, to bring them in? Why would somebody who hasn't seen a show before, why should they come to a show? Well, I mean, you got to start if they're familiar with it, because if they're not at all familiar with it, you're going to have a pretty hard time explaining what's happening. Because people either, with wrestling, either get it or you don't. Mm-hmm. The people that do get it will never need it explained. The people that don't get it could probably never have it explained enough. So, I mean, you could probably talk them into coming once or twice. Just be like, oh, there's dollar beers, which is a good sales tactic. Or like, <laughs> my, like I'm your friend, I'm on there, come check it out. Mm-hmm. And you, some people get hooked that way. Like they yeah. see it one time, even on the independent level. They never watch TV. They go to independent show and they're like, this is the greatest thing ever. They turn on the TV like, that's trash. I just want to watch independent wrestling. Like some people just like the in-your-face stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it depends on the person really how to get them there. If they're not at all a fan or not all aware of what you're doing. Like similar to like how a local band would try and drum up business in like a new area or like a new venue. Mm-hmm. And with people that don't know their music, maybe don't even like their type of music. Like, you just got to kind of start talking and see if you can kind of lead them down a road that gets them to be like, okay, I'll check it out. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if there's any one way I would sell it. It would it'd be really dependent on the person. Right, right. It is true, though, that you, it, it is one of those you get it or you don't. That I, you know, I go to shows and I just, I don't even question it anymore. It just, it seems right. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I get in there and it's not a TV screen, but it's like a TV screen that it sucks me in and... Um, everything else just kind of vanishes off to the off to the perimeter. I'm not thinking about the, all the junk that was bugging me earlier in the day. It's just it's a couple of escape, really good 
hours of escape. And I can't, uh, and that's just me sitting on the outside watching. I, I imagine it's even better for the people that are actually doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have any favorite, if we, if we talk up to the big scale, you know, recommendations for somebody, you know, of something on a, a television product or a particular, you know, WWE or, or, you know, New Japan or anything, anything like that, that might get something, you know, watch this, you might, you might see what it's all about. Well, if I'm trying to get them just on wrestling, probably New Japan, something more along those lines. Because you could obviously check out WWE, duh, they're Mm -hmm. on top for a reason. But you tune in at the wrong time, you're like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I flip back and forth, and I've spent an hour flipping over to Raw and never seen a match. It's just talk. I I keep missing them, flipping Mm -hmm. back. So it all depends what you're trying to get them hooked on or how you're trying to do it. Like, I'd say more for, like, just the wrestling aspect, like New Japan, something like that. Mm -hmm. The overall just flavor of the entertainment, WWE. So it really just depends. Okay. So let's, let's go into the hard sell here for people that, uh, that have next Saturday night free and Fire Pro 134 is, is going on. Um, do, you, do you know kind of already off the top of your head what some of the matches are going to be, particularly if you, know, if you have one coming up? But, well, I mean, um, just, first of all, myself and the flawless one, Dave Allen, who you've interviewed. Yes. Um, he's a friend of the show. Yeah, we're a team now. I don't know if you know because uh-huh. – at Fire Pro, there's a bunch of new guys, like I said, just walking in like they own the joint, and we're going to shut that right down. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you ever seen uh, Big Time Flash Harris wrestle? I have. Yeah. Once. Um, did you know we did a no DQ match a couple months ago? I, I know about it. I saw the show before that and the show yeah. after it. We I both lost that. on a count out, and I actually ended up in a sling because of the match, and I've been at every show, and he hasn't been there since until this next show when he's mm-hmm. tagging with Stonehenge Slater Wallace against me and Dave Allen. Oh, nice. And that's just what I'm talking about with these young guys. Like, mm-hmm. they don't get it. They just come and go as they want. So, like, I mean, Dave, we've had enough. So we made a statement with Hadley, like Dave's going to take the belt from mm-hmm. him, and we're just going to put all the new guys in check. Like, just because you're new and younger doesn't mean you think you're going to come in there. Like, we know some stuff. And then I know Jeremy Hadley, speaking of the champ, mm-hmm. um, he's got a match against Tank, who is absolute beast of a person. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Tank's been at Fire Pro a couple times. I've been on some shows with Tank, and I'm not scared of anyone, but I would definitely have a solid strategy going into a match with him. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a big dude. And yeah, definitely. And he puts you down once, and you're down. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I mean, and then Tag Team Champs, uh, Blackout, Mustafa, and Drax will be in action. Austin Fury will be in action with the Impact title. Um, I think him and Ann Butler, they might even be having a rematch because their last one ended in a count out. Because mm-hmm. they wrestled for, like, 45 minutes, I swear, and then died. So, I mean, it's top to bottom. It's a solid show. Johnny mm-hmm. Motley will be there. All the girls love Johnny Motley because oh, yeah. he has long hair and almost dabs. But... Can't put down the cheeseburger, so I'll never get him. Oh, and then uh, I like the Gypsy King, Richie Rothschild. He's back. Okay. He's one of my favorites. So I think he's sniffing around the Impact title, too, which is nice because he's a bigger man and what is fast becoming a smaller man's division. So mm-hmm. that should be pretty interesting. Good. Now, you, you set me up with a perfect segue there because I'll, I'll help you out a little bit here. Um, you were talking about you and, and Dave Allen sort of joining forces and, mm-hmm. and basically throwing down the gauntlet to the to the younger guys to, to step up and... and toe the line and, and get in shape um I, my my computer here fell asleep but uh so I, I captured a little bit of of sound from the last fire pro show right before dave allen's match with scotty allen all right and so this this was you too uh basically telling everybody that so well, let's listen There's a lot of new faces in that locker room. And they 
Did that work? Were they silent until you gave them permission to speak? They're too stupid. Like, I care if they boo. And then you had the one section trying to cheer me. I don't care what you do. I don't need you. My envelope stays the same, whether you cheer or boo. I'm just out there to win. Except in the case of last month, I, we weren't really trying to win it. We were just trying to set him up, which mm-hmm. we did. So I hope Hadley's ready, because uh, I think Dave has some other stuff cooking, too. Okay. So so you were, uh, you were outside the ring during his match, and mm-hmm. he was out there for your match. Yep, and that's we have each other's backs. That's, no one's gonna pull a fast one on us. We're not gonna let our egos get in the way. Uh, this is Dave's time. Dave can he can take the championship for a little while. I'm fine with that. Like we know what we're doing. We have lots of plans. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we're not one of those groups where we're gonna bicker over the. T- he can have it. I'm, I've been there, done that. He's been there before. He can be there again. I'll get my turn. What's important is we're on top. So, is there anybody that you are particularly focused on, or is this just this just applies to, to everybody? Well, since Flash Harris has decided to come back, apparently, I mean, I'm going to give him my utmost attention, first of all. And then um, Dave's opponent from last time, Scotty Young, uh, he's got a big mouth. Uh, I don't like that guy. I'll be happy to smack him pretty soon here. So and we'll just see whatever young guys feel like they want to step out of line, and they'll get smacked right back into place. Is there anybody else that's at the level of you and flawless Dave Allen, that if you had no to one's form at a our trio, level. With, you know, but just you know, in the in the 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 not quite the young guy realm, but if you had to, if you had, oh, to we wouldn't a let third, a young guy hit on this. That would yeah. defeat the purpose. But yeah, um, if there was a third there's some fire pro guys that have in. been around, we could have our eye on if we wanted. There probably a couple of nudges would probably do it. Mm-hmm. I have a couple ideas. I mean, Dave, you talked, scouting but anybody at the moment? Yes and no. I mean, I'm not going to tell you our plan. Well, sure, but. Dave and I, what we have going is pretty strong, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we could do anything at any time because I just really don't care. Okay. So, um, Fire Pro 134 mm-hmm. coming up this Saturday. May 20th. Bell time is 630. Yep. 7071 Broadway, Maryville, Indiana. It's, Kids it's, 12 and under free with one paying adult. Awesome. Good hot dogs. Yeah, they are good hot dogs. Mm-hmm. And the, the nachos are excellent. They are. I think I've had them both. Not on, this, not on the same night, though. That, be, that might be a little bit much. Yeah, don't be that guy. Um, but, yeah, so uh, I've discovered that if you look up Impact Christian Church on Google Maps, it, I thought it showed up once, but it doesn't. So you do have to do look at the 7071 Broadway address. Yeah. Uh, but the door should open at 6, and then bell time is 6.30 mm-hmm. um, for, some, for some good action. And you can always go to facebook.com backslash fire.pro.wrestling. It's the company mm-hmm. page. It's got all the info there. All right. And if anybody wants to, to keep up with what's going on in the world of CK1, is there a way to do that through social media? I mean, you can just add me. On, find me on Facebook. Just add me. I don't care. My Facebook, it's not. I don't keep it separate. Like, whatever. I mean, be forewarned. Um, Facebook, to me, is just a game. I'm a very big troll. So if you're going to get your feelings hurt, don't add me. Because <laughs> I do not care. It's Facebook. Get over it. Okay. Yeah. Any, any last words for... If you're not there Saturday night to watch me beat the living crap out of Flash Harris, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Especially if you have kids, they're free. Come on. it will be time for some serious reevaluation, I think. I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, Thanks for, for having the time on a late Sunday evening. Absolutely. Um, we'll do this again sometime. I've, I've, yeah. There's always an open invitation for anybody to come back. Feel free back to have me and Michael Allen debate in here anytime you want. We could do that. Yeah, we can do that. We should get like a whole, a whole ACW roundtable of some kind. Sure. If you want to watch them, I'll get verbally annihilated. Well, <laughs> you have to hire extra security, I think. But... Uh, Okay, thanks so much. This has been a blast. Um, It's about 10 o'clock here on WVLP. I'm Ken the Metal Professor. This has been the Northwest Indiana Wrestling Action Program. And coming up next is a replay of Punk Rock Radio.